Well, I'm back. This is going to be episode four of Smokey and the One-Armed Bandit. First thing we're going to look at on today's episode, these mighty fine exhaust headers here. They uh, were made up by Ryan at Advanced Headers in Holden Hill, and he's done a really good job at them. I'm quite happy with them. They're a uh, mandrel bent unit, and uh, even managed to impress Dad, which, if you know him, is no small feat. So, so the front two cylinders on this bank, the, the pipes of them unbolt separately to the rear, this is just so you can get the exhaust manifold out past the steering shaft, because if you look there, they actually go on separate sides of it. So uh, we've got that so that you can actually unbolt it easy. Yeah, really nice unit, doesn't get too close to anything. See here, they go around the steering shaft. The steering shaft isn't the standard unit. I've got a uh, thinner one that's made up by a guy in Queensland. I'll put his uh, details down the bottom there if you want to get in contact. This is the standard unit. That's the one that we've got. You could probably fit the standard one in if you've got a custom set made, but this is a race car and uh, I don't need the fat gilbo or anything else. I'd rather have space for my fingers to fit. Then on the other side, basically the same sort of thing down there. I don't think these ones are actually able to be separated, but they don't actually need to be, so that's no worries. I'll take a look under the car and show you how it looks from underneath the car to give you guys a bit more of an idea too. So we're under the driver's side here. You can see the steering shaft coming down. Everything's, uh, it's a bit busy under there, but it's not too bad. You can also see the two exhaust flanges there for the, the front two and the rear two cylinders, so they can be unbolted separately. Also, if you look through the middle of the wise fab arm there, you can see the bigger bolt that tough mounts uh, drill out and then use for the mounting kit for the engine. So uh, yeah, you can see that all comes back here. I only got them to make the exhaust this far because we're still gonna be messing around with bits under here. So I didn't want them to make a full exhaust because it was probably gonna get, end up hitting something that I was going to uh, stick under here later. So I just got them to make it to there. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. You can also see how the sump sits while we're under here. There's a bit of, uh, bit of space to the cross member, not heaps, but also it runs very flat with the cross member which is quite nice. <laughs> so the next thing we're gonna take a look at is the SLR kit that I bought for the front end of the car. Don't know if I'd consider this so much car parts as it is art. It's, uh, it's pretty visually stunning. I got it in gray because I'm not a hot boy and purple isn't really my style. So I've got that, let's take a look at it. Um, I'll do some beauty shots of it too because I think it's worth it. So I did go the whole nine yards when I got this kit. I, uh, I pretty much bought every part of it that you can get. And uh, it's definitely not cheap. It's, uh, I think it was like $2,900 to buy it in Australian uh, dollars. And then uh, good old uh, customs decided to charge me another 350 to let it come in the country. So yeah, definitely not cheap, but it's proper race car stuff. Even my dad agreed with that. So I'll take you through what I, I got quickly and then I'll start putting it onto the car. So here's the main bits of the kit. I got the Ultra kit because that's how I roll. I got it all in grey too, because like I said, not a hot boy. You can see the welds on this arm are really, really nice. Obviously TIG welds, spherical bearings there and there. Nice bit of kit. We've got here the, uh, the drop knuckle. This bolts to the bottom of your standard knuckle. It allows you to not completely mess up your geometry when you dump the car on the ground. That's a... Uh, Nice thing to do, not completely mess up your car because you lowered it. Then we've got the top hat for the coil over. There's a million bits of adjustability there I need to figure out. I'm guessing it does camber, which is pretty obvious, but also probably caster. Then you've got this mount here, which connects to this end of the control arm. That also allows you to adjust caster. And there's a few other bits and pieces that come with them too, but I couldn't be bothered unpacking them right now. So I need to rip the old WiseFab stuff out so I can install this brand new stuff. Thank you. 
So I pulled out one side's worth of wires fab and uh, taking a bit of a look at them, I can see there's a few differences. So the wires fab's definitely longer. You can probably see it there. I think it's about 15 mil at least, just from my uh, very rough measurements. But uh, yeah, you can certainly see the construction's quite a bit different too, just with how they're designed. The wires fab seems to be like one piece of metal that's got cutouts in it where SLR stuff is a tube that's welded together. So just interesting little bits and pieces that you can actually notice when you've got them next to each other. Probably not too many people has, have WiseFab and SLR kits on the floor in their garage to take a look at them. So I might leave that for a different day. I've uh, got to get home and do some other bits and pieces. Don't we, Casper? Yeah, we do. Right, oh, so we're back up the top of the hill here. I want to feel like I'm actually going to get something done to Smokey these holidays, so I thought I might push through today and see if I can get all the front end back in the car. To do that though, you're going to have to change these strut tops over and uh, put the SLR versions in. Also take out the, uh, the wires fab on the passenger side and then put both passenger and uh, driver's side SLR gear in. I may even read the instructions when I uh, do put the SLR stuff in. They've got a, a couple of pages of instructions there. I kind of feel like I probably should follow them. I haven't had a too much of a look under here before, but these coilovers are pretty nice. I'm guessing that's rebound adjustment there. And possibly compression up there. I'll have to figure it out, but uh, double adjustable. Pretty good bit of kit, actually. So I got the SLR strut top on. All looks pretty good in there. Lines up pretty well. Obviously this strut tower needs a fair bit of love. Before I bought the car, someone hacked out that section there so that the wires fab could come through it, but that's not really very structural. So that's gonna need some repair. I've got some ideas in my head about how I do that, but really at the moment it's just future Tate's problem because I need to get stuck into the other side. Other side's removed. Now I just need to pull out the other strut top, change that over and then I can get stuck into putting the SLR arms in. So the strut top's done. That's all bolted in there, looks quite nice. The strut tower's just as bad, if not worse than the other side. So that's again gonna need some work before I drive the car. But that's future Tate's problem. I was going to do all this on the hoist, but Dad's car's on there at the moment, so can't do that. Got the instructions out for the SLR stuff. Looks pretty basic. Some torque settings and other bits and pieces, general uh, guidance. Do need to figure out what I'm going to do in regards to Ackerman. I basically want it the same as the standard BMW, but I'm not sure exactly which setting that would be. I need to figure that one out. I'll start from the standard BMW Ackerman and probably work my way from there, I reckon. So now I've got to uh, follow the instructions, install it on the car. So the first thing that I need to do apparently, step one, is get these inner ball joint studs and put them through the cross member to 90 newton meters. Shouldn't be too hard to do, hopefully. There we go, 90 newton meters. So it doesn't actually say, this is the next page, it doesn't actually say step two anywhere specifically, but kind of feel like I need to put the uh, lower control arm and the, uh, the lollipop on. So I'll put them on next, got them laid out here and uh, chuck them onto the car now. So I've got one arm on. Getting this on is a quite a bit of a bitch. So that's a really, really tight fit there. I've used like wheel bearing grease just to uh, make it slide on a bit easier. 
And I think really you're supposed to have a press when you put these on. I don't have a press, so I've just used a hammer. When it, uh, when it got down to the stage where this bit was poking through the other side, I just used a socket that would uh, go on this bit. Didn't need to give it huge wax, but decent size um, taps just to get it down. Also, make sure you put the right side, the right one of these lollipops on the right arm, because uh, otherwise you're also going to be hating life when you put them on and realise that they're the wrong side. So, test fit before you do anything, because once you put these on, they're pretty much on forever. So I got both of the arms on now. I did notice on the passenger side the dowel that holds the, uh, the lollipop to the chassis is actually damaged. They've got uh, two dowels that basically um, come out of the chassis rail and the bolts go through the middle of them. That's just to help locate the, the lollipop assembly. And one of, the dam one of the dowels is actually damaged. Looks like someone else has uh, put, it, put something on there at some point and not made sure it's on the dowels properly and tightened it up and it's damaged one of the dowels. So I'll have to fix that a little later on. So now I've got the arms on, it's time to put the bits that bolt to the bottom of the knuckle on, which are these bits here. they are uh, got to bolt to the bottom of the knuckle and then to the lower control arm. And I have to put some shims in it or something like that. I'll have to reread the instructions, but it should be pretty simple, I think. So the SLR kit's all in the car now. I got a little distracted and uh, forgot that I need to film the outro and edit up this video. So uh, it's been sitting like this for a couple of months. But uh, yeah, all went together pretty easy. There was a couple of bits that were a little bit more technical, but generally speaking, wasn't too bad. I have uh, have been moving a bit quicker than the upload sort of suggests. I've got other bits and pieces on the car on the go, but really want to just focus on one or two things per video and uh, complete them all out, rather than jumping from one thing to the other to the other. So. Uh, yeah, jump on the ground now and I'll show you what it looks like now it's all in the car. So here it is on the car. I've only nipped any of these bolts up because I know I'm gonna have to pull it out at some point in time. All in there looks pretty good. Pretty decent amount of lock, I reckon. There's a, also a reasonably good clearance and all those sort of things in there. I'll just jump a little bit further back and uh, show you a shot from not quite as close. And probably on the other side too. So there's the other side. So it's taken a little while, but I think we've got some pretty good stuff done in this episode. We've got the headers out the way, which is probably one of the biggest hurdles for the LS swaps into these cars. Obviously the next thing we did was the SLR kit. Again, having a good front end set up in a drift car is uh, pretty paramount. So glad to have that gear underneath me, lots of adjustability. Going forward, I have uh, didn't waste any time, or not too much time anyway. As Soon as the SLR stuff was in the car, Pretty much pulled out the rear end, the entire subframe. Car's getting around on Gojax at the moment. That's pretty much the next thing that I need to get onto is the rear end, but won't go into that now because uh, that's all for another episode. So I'll see you in a couple of months time when I uh, finally get around to editing and uploading that one.